टुडे वील बी टॉकिंग अबाउट दी आई वी आईलेट वायरिंग टेक्निक नाउ द आईलेट वायरिंग टेक्निक इज अ टेक्निक दैट कैन बी यूज टू अचीव क्विक आई एम एफ और इंटर मैक्सिलरी फिक्सेशन इट कैन बी यूज टू अचीव आई एम एफ इंट्रा ऑपरेटिवली इन केसेस ऑफ मिनिमली डिसप्लेस फ्रैक्चर्स सो बिफोर वी स्टार्ट वील क्विकली टॉक अबाउट द आर्मामेंटेरियम वी हैव अ नीडल होल्डर वी हैव अ वायर कटर Uh, we can also use a wire bender or a wire twister like in this case we have a 24 gauge wire a surgical length burr and the wire that has been pre stretched that is cold worked to up to 10% of its total length and then cut to approximately 10 to 15 cm lengths now this is a model mandible okay we will be using Uh, the third quadrant as a possible uh, model now if you notice we have traced a fracture here with relation to the uh, teeth that is the first molar and the second premolar in this area now for us to actually do the eyelet wiring we first have to achieve the actual eyelet so how do we do that so the wire is first bent into half in a gentle loop which is then looped around a burr you can use any material that may be at least 2 to 3 mm in diameter and you will require at least 2 to 3 bends is the first bend and that's the second bend okay so with that that's your eyelet formed you can notice the eyelet with the bends and the two tails now before moving on we'll quickly make another eyelet just to reiterate the procedure you bend the wire in half hold the wire using your wire twister place it into the burr itself and then rotate so again this is your eyelet that has been made you can notice the eyelet the twists and the two tails now we'll be using one of these eyelets to secure the mandible ensure that you hold the tails sufficiently away and you give a gentle curvature to the tails of the eyelet the eyelet is then passed between the teeth that are of concern you pass the eyelet the eyelet comes all the way and then you split the eyelet tails the distal tail is then threaded back yeah so you notice how the distal thread has a uh, distal tail has been threaded back then you will have the mesial tail that is also threaded back please note that once the threads are in place they will have to be threaded through the eyelet to finally tighten now in this current condition 
you will notice that the eyelet is in the middle and only one tooth across you will have the threads passing from the lingual back to the buccal and now you will have the distal tail passing through the eyelet coming all the way mesially where the threads will then be twisted together so as to secure the eyelet in place. So this tends to happen at times clinically where your wire may not be immediately secured. So please ensure that your wire is secured. You have to always keep constant traction on the wire so that there is no loosening eventually. Reposition your eyelet and ensure that your wire is twisted tight. Now once that is done, hold on to the tails, use your cutter to shear off. So you will be left with something like this. Now mind you, you will have to further tighten the eyelet. to get a secure snug fit. Once this has been achieved, the eyelet will then have to be turned and twisted in such a manner that it may be tucked into either the interdental space or folded so that it does not interfere with occlusion nor does it affect the patient's gingiva and the ability to maintain oral hygiene. So, a very common method of doing that is securing the eyelet in such a manner that it forms a small loop near the embrasure. And that's the eyelet that has been secured. I'll just show you on the lingual aspect. You will notice how it goes around the teeth. And here you will notice the eyelet that has been secured in place. Now that we have secured the eyelet onto the fractured part, we will try and achieve IMF. Now here if you notice, we have the eyelet that is in situ onto the second quadrant as well. Now I will just quickly articulate the mandible. And you will notice here how the eyelets are secured in place such that the loops are almost coinciding. Now these coinciding loops will then be secured individually so as to achieve IMF. Now as a rule you will generally use at least three eyelets per arch where you will achieve three point contact that is one here, one in the anterior and one on the opposite side. A standard practice, it's always better to have an additional eyelet. So generally four eyelets in the lower and four eyelets in the upper arch are something that are clinically recommended. Now eyelets can generally be used to achieve adequate intraoperative control of fracture fragments. They can be continued post-operatively but will not be able to support the arches in case you plan to achieve post-operative elastic supported IMF. In those cases, eyelets have limited application. As such, the indications for IV eyelet applications are limited but it is an important and quick tool to have in your arsenal when you are dealing with the reduction of mandibular fractures. Suppose your patient has come back or you are done with your reduction intraoperatively and you plan to remove your eyelets. So what is the method to achieve that? Now we will be going in the exact opposite direction. We will be first opening up the loop. The 
the loop will first be opened. Now, once the loop has been opened, you will then cut the wire just next to the eyelet, the way I have done here. Now, the reason for doing this is, if you notice the wire here is very jagged and when you pull this wire from behind, this wire is going to lacerate the gingiva. So it's always better to achieve a good secure cut. So once you've done that and you've removed the wire through the eyelet, then you will be cutting off the mesial thread. So now you have the twisted U that has been separated and then you hold the eyelet and pull. That's it. This technique generally reduces lacerations. Only remember to ensure that there are no twisted ends to the wires so that they are kept far away from the gingival area to prevent any lacerations. Patients generally would not require anesthesia. Something like topical anesthesia is more than adequate for the removal of an eyelet. Sometimes sensitive patients may require local infiltrations or blocks depending upon the individual patient.